So here we have a really nice hip piece here. Very good, very good, very good. David Attenborough has betrayed the living world he loves. A wonderful Guardian hit piece by George Monbiot. Oh, is it Monbiot? Look at this cunt. <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> Just look. I mean, you might look at me in this t shirt with my shaved head and these big ass headphones and think, God, you look like a, a massive cunt. But come on, this guy. What a smug cunt. Look at him in his. Look at this coat. Oh, I wear a coat that costs nothing and a shitty grey t-shirt. Like, oh, could you try any harder to look like you don't own money? You fuck. So this is what this is their beef with David Attenborough. This is this is this is what they do. This, this is this is what the Guardian pay people to do. Is crap like this, right? So what's it say? By downplaying our environmental crisis, the presenters' BBC films have generated complacency confusion and ignorance by downplaying our environmental crisis <sighs> really is that what David Amber has been doing downplaying <laughs> is that what he does <laughs> doesn't he just isn't he just one of the greatest wildlife documentarians of all time <laughs> why would you have a beef with David Amber the guy it's your problem. You are a fuck. You are a massive fuckwit. That <laughs> to find a problem with this. <laughs> oh fuck! I haven't even read any of it. He might have some valid points, but still, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's have a look. Knowingly creating a false impression of the world. This is a serious matter. Mm. No one would ever accuse British newspapers of knowingly creating a false impression of the world. No, sir. Eh? Admittedly, the BBC probably do that as well. But the, lo the one last thing the BBC have got that they do good is their wildlife stuff. All the wildlife uh, documentary stuff is um, done in Bristol so it's like totally it's very separate from the rest of it that all the shit they moved up to Salford and that and they still have their integrity because they're in their own little bubble away from that other bubble so I think they just they just leave them alone and go you know you just just do that great stuff you've done for like decades do you know what I mean you want to attack them make the BBC get all uppity about it and then the BBC meddle with the one good thing they've got left and fuck that up as well Christ God it is more serious still when the BBC does it and yet worse when the presenter is the most trusted man in Britain is he? where, where do you end that title? what's this? is there a link to this? the most trusted oh no now I'm going to go oh to the independent no don't take me to no no not to the independent no no if there's one thing that's worse than anything, it's the independent, the the, the laughing stock of the internet. <laughs> of the, I mean, to be the laughing stock of news. The only thing that might be worse than the independent is possibly the express. The express the most dead. Look at look at how slow this internet is. Fuck you. Right, we'll keep reading, and then something weird's gonna happen. But as his latest interview with the Observer reveals. David Attenborough sticks to his line that fully representing environmental issues is a turn off. Yeah, because, well, it is. Why do you, like, my nephew likes, here we go, here we go, take me into, fuck you. Look, my nephew, I bought him, uh, like, the Blue Planet book for, I think, Christmas or his birthday. I think it was Christmas. He loved it. Do you know why? Because he's, he's like, He's seven? Eight? I want to go with eight. It's his birthday soon. Probably should get that one right. Anyway, he's a little kid. He's the same as me when I was a little kid. I love, like, I love whales. Now, I love not just the country. I think, you know, whales. I love whales and stuff like that. I loved it. 
and it's good to take a, an interest in you know it captivates young people and old people everyone's captivated by it everyone loves it it takes you away and you see the like seeing the beauty of nature is fantastic like it boggles my mind that I go down to that beach and watch the sunset and the only people down there are local Thais who see it all the time you got people here on holiday from Russia I mean you know what sunsets you've seen in Moscow just dirt sunsets like you've got one of the most amazing visuals you can get you know Thai sunsets are epic you know appreciating nature is fucking great do you know what I mean this is what we want we want to just be taken away from this crap and we've got these people working very hard to like get to, to film stuff that it's just it's the amount of effort that goes into film the stuff that they film the amount of footage they have to use they have to travel like mad distances to crazy places dangerous places for what so you can see the beauty of nature and this motherfucker doesn't realize is that we just want to watch nature so we can be happy and go god nature's great let's stop fucking with it <laughs> you massive dickhead the one thing you can take away from it is just looking at it and go god that's fucking brilliant let's stop fucking with nature in it you watch blue planet and you'll be like oh, we need to stop dumping toxins into the sea because it's awesome why are we doing that but oh no this guy clearly wants David Attenborough screaming at you through the TV he's going you must not there me God it's an F what, what are you going to do politicise Rasta Mouse next you are a fuck <clears throat> anyway his new series, Dynasties, I'm not saying dynasties, I refuse to say that. Dynasty will mention the pressures affecting wildlife, but Ambra makes it clear that it will play them down. To do otherwise, he suggests, would be pro... You see this word here? Prosilitizing <laughs> and alarmist. His series will be a great relief from the from the political see this it will be a great relief from the political landscape which otherwise dominates our thoughts yes it is that's if you if this fuck nugget this fucking look at this absolute tit if this guy mate if this guy came to that beach and just seen this beautiful sunset He's like, why isn't, why isn't political dissent sprayed into the sky? Why isn't there a massive biplane? You know, those biplanes with a big flag saying, resist, resist. Like, why isn't, the, why isn't there a rock formation that says, vote or die, that can be seen from outer space on the beach? Why? Why are the fishermen not wearing political? Oh, fuck you. Mm. Oh. Yes, a great relief. Do you know about relief? Do you know about escapism? Do you know about getting away from it all? Do you know what this is? Do you know what this does? Numbs the pain. Numbs the pain. Seeing a beautiful sunset, it numbs the pain. It doesn't numb the pain, it totally takes you away. Seeing a full moon. Watching documentaries about these amazing animals that just just do stuff you're like how do they know how to do all this great stuff like these, these things are great isn't that amazing how they just get on with it and they just know they're born and they know what to do don't need to go to school don't need to do nothing they just know what to do do you know what I mean yeah, I remember seeing a cow like a calf a cow a, calf, a cow give birth to a calf and the calf just come out and it stood up I just started fucking running. It just, it just gets up and he's going, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, here I am. Bop, 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 bop. Like, what? That's mad. And you, but no. No. It's not political enough for you, is it? Fuck face. You twat. Right. In light of the astonishing rate of collapse of the animal populations he features alongside most of the rest of the world's living systems, and when broadcasting as a whole 
has disgracefully failed to represent such truths, I don't think such escapism is appropriate or justified. Why? Why? It's not really like, I mean, why? Why does everything have to be political? Like, do you know, my nephew will take a massive interest in animals. And he's very young. When he grows up, when he starts to like know some, when he starts to know a bit more stuff about the world, I take a great interest in animals. And he might find out animals are being a bit fucked over. And environments are being destroyed. And he might go, oh, I love them. I love these motherfuckers. I'm not gonna let that happen. Do you do you get it? Like, fuck. It is not. Here's this word again. It is not. Pro, uh, pro, <laughs> I've never heard this word before. <laughs> pro, I don't give a fuck if I don't know certain words. It's for dicks. It is not proselytizing or alarmist to tell us the raw truth about what is happening to the world. However much it might discomfort us. Nor do I believe that revealing the marvels of nature automatically translates into environmental action. As the executive producer of Dynasties, I said Dynasties, Dynasties, claims, I've come to believe it can have the opposite effect. Oh, yeah, dick. For many years, wildlife filmmaking has presented a pristine living world, created an impression of security and abundance, even the places of place Yes, the camera reassures us that there are vast tracts of wilderness in which wildlife continues to thrive. They cultivate complacency, not action. It's not David, like, whose job do you think this is? Who, who is this guy? Do you remember that, um, there was that show that was written by, uh, was it Russell T. Davis? He's the guy that wrote Doctor Who and that. It's called Queer as Folk. This guy watch Queer as Folk and go, no, it, it must star Peter Thatchell. <laughs> it needs to be about Peter Thatchell. I don't just want to see gays doing gay stuff. I want to see them fighting <laughs> against bigotry. <laughs> you fuck with. You cannot do such a thing passively. Wildlife filmmakers I know tell me that the effort to betray what looks like an untouched ecosystem becomes harder every year. Well, yeah, we don't want to watch. You don't want to watch beautiful wildlife photography that's not beautiful. Do you, do you even get what this is? It's ent- it's fucking entertainment at the end of the day. It's a fucking God. We want to see the wonders of nature. I have to choose their camera angles ever more carefully to exclude the evidence of destruction. Yes, that's called being a good camera person. They know, and many feel deeply uncomfortable about it, that they are telling a full story. Well, at least they feel uncomfortable about it. (laughs) Not one prick at the Guardian feels uncomfortable about telling false narratives. Yeah, this guy doesn't feel uncomfortable. No, no one who works at the Guardian feels uncomfortable about the crap they do. No one at the Daily Mail feels uncomfortable. Certainly, no one at the Independent or the Express. The Sun. Well, the, the, the Sun is so blatant about it; it's just ridiculous. Ah, what makes Attenborough's comments particularly odd is that they come just a year after the final episode of Blue Planet Two series triggered a massive effort to reduce plastic pollution. And do you know who really? Do you know who really? really um really uh jumped on board with that your rivals the daily mail the daily mail pushed that whole plastic anti-plastic thing like a motherfucker because that's all you newspapers have got now is just campaigning because you don't do news anymore do you you just campaign 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 just fucking dicks the response demonstrated a vast public appetite for information about environmental crisis and an urgent desire to act on it Oh, how long does this crap go on for? I'm not reading the whole thing. So here, but the so it told us nothing about the driving forces behind climate breakdown, which is because you don't want to get into that debate. There's other document. This is not his. This is not what he does. 
There's other documentaries. I watched the documentary all about climate change. It was up for a BAFTA. I watched it. And it still had beautiful photography in it. I watched a documentary by the um, Y... Oh, I can't remember. That, that Chinese artist who was in jail for ages. About immigrant, about migrants going across Europe. And it was, it was one of the most beautifully shot things I've seen in ages. And, like, it didn't really tell you much. It didn't really... It didn't <laughs> I don't think it changed my mind about anything. But um, weirdly, it was like, oh, that looks quite all right. And it, it was like, it was like migrant camps, but it was shot so beautifully. It was like, God, that looks all right. I don't know what the fuss is about. <laughs> the Calais jungle never looks so good. It's called filmmaking. You wouldn't know about art, would you? Whatever you're, what's his name again? This George Moneybot, you toss wipe. If Attenborough's environmentalism has a coherent, coherent theme, it is shifting the blame from powerful forces onto either so, 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 why can't I read society? Either society in general or the poor and the, and the weak. What? Have I missed something? What? Apart from the general we, the only uh, distinct force identified as responsible was the 1.3 billion Chinese that a large proportion of Chinese emissions are caused by manufacturing goods the West buys was not mentioned. Why is that going to be in Blue Planet? <laughs> like, <not laughs> Why are you going to turn around and go, Air, China, you're making a lot of stuff and causing a right bother you are. Do you not understand what um, wildlife documentaries are? The fact that he even mentioned about it, it the fact that he mentioned it is enough. The series immediately triggered a new form of climate denial. I was bombarded with people telling me there was no point in taking action in Britain because the Chinese were killing the planet. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> it's kind of true. You can't. I mentioned this before. You can't stop China. They give zero fucks. Zero fucks. What are you going to do? You're not going to stop them. Like seriously, you <laughs> It doesn't mean you. Just, and I think that's an idiotic thing to go. Oh well. Telling me there was no point. Telling me there was no point in taking action in Britain because the Chinese were killing the planet. So what? If all your friends are rapists, does that mean you just become a rapist as well? No, it doesn't. It's about having core values and being moral. It's about having your own values. Don't contribute. Do you not understand the concept of values? Idiot boy. Idiot boy. If Attenborough's environmentalism has a coherent theme, it is shifting the blame from powerful fo forces onto either society in general and the poor. And the I don't understand. What, how on earth did he come to the conclusion, where he's talking about the Chinese, that Attenborough has shifted the blame from powerful forces onto either society in general or the poor and the weak? How did he get there? Do I have to read the rest of this crap? Oh, God, I should have read this before. I apologize. Well, I'm, I'm scanning it. Look, I'm never find out the truth about climate change, and this, in my view, is a total disaster. Shifting onto the poor and God, he's shifting the blame onto the poor and the weak. How, how did you get there? How did you get to that conclusion? You really are worse than I thought you are. You are a complete fucking failure of life. Does someone pay you to do this? Do you get paid money? Do you get paid actual money? Christ. You just need to go sell your ass on the streets. You dirty boy. Sometimes it is. it becomes pretty dark. In 2013, he told Telegraph, what are all these famines in Ethiopia? What are they about? They're about too many people for too little land. We say get the United Nations to send them bags of flour. It's balmy. It kind of is. That uh, that's a whole population overpopulation, and eventually, there is something about populations sort of sorting themselves out. You know, you get famines low fertility rates just somehow nature finds a way to stop us becoming too overpopulated stuff happens it's just 
how it is is like forest fires you know you've got a big forest fire going on in California right now but like in certain parts of the world like forest fires are like a necessary part of the ecosystem to sort of sort stuff out this planet Earth's weird like well, it's not weird it's just we don't understand it like you don't understand a lot of stuff the last one so the last famine in Ethiopia was caused not by an absolute food shortage but by civil war and government policies his suggestion that food relief is counterproductive suggests he read nothing on the subject since Thomas Malthus's essay in 1978. No, I think there's been a lot of things going on about Ethiopia. I guarantee this guy hasn't read. I, I don't, like, seriously, I'd have to deep dive on that. I might deep dive on that later, if I feel like it, but uh, I don't... don't what do you think David Attenborough hasn't read anything? He hasn't read anything since 1798. <laughs> I'm citing this from 1798. Is is he trying to be funny? I'm not very good at it. But cruel and ignorant as these comments were, they were more or less cost-free. By contrast, you do not remain a national treasure by upsetting powerful vested interests. Look at the flack the outspoken wildlife and environmental presenter Chris Packham attracts for standing up to the hunting lobby. Does he? I haven't heard much about Chris Packham getting standing up to the hunting lobby you know the hunting hunting lobby is like probably the most minute thing the hunting lobby there's more flat earth than there's more flat earthers than hunting people in the hunting lobby I guarantee it shut up I have always been entranced by Attenborough's wildlife programs yes that's that's the point that's what good wildlife documentaries do but astonished by his consistent failure to mount a coherent, truthful, and effective defense of the living world he loves. His reputation of the wonders of nature has been a great public service, but withholding the knowledge he need to, we need to find... No, sorry. But withholding the knowledge we need to defend it, I believe, a greater service. He just loves nature. He's not, like, he's not a fucking scientist, you bumbuckler. He's not... David Amber is not a scientist. He's a filmmaker that loves nature. You're an idiot. I think David Cameron's going to sort out the Somali pirate crisis. No. David. David. Did I say David Cameron? Sorry, James Cameron. Because James Cameron loves boats and shit. That was the joke. It's failed. I put. Uh, why am I saying sorry? I ain't saying sorry for shit. It's failed. God, you love that. This is uh, George Monibot. Mombiot is a guardian columnist. Yes, we have a serious lack of care workers in the UK. Go wipe some ass. Cunt. <laughs> Go wipe some ass. They always have this on the Guardian now as well. Since you're here. Dot, 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 dot. Da, 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 da. Three years ago, we knew we had to try to make The Guardian sustainable by deepening our relationship with our readers. The revenues from our newspaper had diminished and the technologies that connected us with the global audience had moved advertising money away from news organizations. Yes, because no one wants to read your crap. Oh, look, for little's one dollar. That's because I'm... That's because I'm in Thailand, isn't it? Not that they have dollars here, but like when you're outside the UK, you ask, ask it in dollars. <laughs> well, they asked uh, the nerve of them. I ain't giving you shit. <laughs> if you donate to the Guardian, honestly, just just sort your life out, please. Terrible. Well, I mean, as hit pieces go, this is just clutching it. This is like, yeah. He said, "Hi, George. George, can you write a hit piece on David Attenborough?" What? He's a, but he's a national treasure. The most trusted man in Britain. Yeah, well, we hate everybody. Yeah, no one's safe from us. We're going down the toilet, so we need to create some sort of stink. So let's go after David Attenborough. Yeah, well, you know me. I'll do anything for money and getting my dick sucked. I don't know if someone sucked your dick or not. Mm. Anyway, isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful how shit the Guardian is? <laughs> Isn't it great?
how terrible the guy is, especially online. Like, God, they are 